In this video we're taking a look at Minecraft Education Edition version 1.14.50 for beginners. So if you're a teacher and you haven't used Minecraft before then this video will help you get started. When you install Minecraft and you sign in you'll be greeted with this welcome screen and the first thing that you need to probably do is to set yourself up as a playing character. So You'll click on the coat hanger icon and you can see here we have our default skins. These are our male and female characters. I tend to just go with this one here, a developer skin pack. But as you can see, the further we go down, the more you can really go into some very interesting customized skins. And these are quite thematic based on different times of the year. And these tend to change quite frequently. So today I might actually jump into this character skin and I'll go confirm. So you can now see as I move my mouse around, I am playing in the role of this character. My name will always appear, or rather my first name and my surname initial in Minecraft Education Edition. And this is the same for all students. Students and teachers cannot change their names. So there's no anonymity in the game. You always know who is in the world by their first name and surname initial, regardless of what they look like. So if you are a first time user and you've chosen a skin, the next thing that you'll be doing is going into the play button. So we are now in the play screen and view my world takes you to any worlds that you have downloaded and used on your computer. As a first time user, you wouldn't expect to see anything there. View library. We'll be going into that in a minute, but you can also create new worlds, start from scratch, join other worlds such as students hosting worlds so that you can work with them. And you can also import worlds from any internet sources such as the Minecraft Education Edition Community Hub website. First time users, we are going into View Library and we're going straight into the fourth option, which is How to Play. Now from here we're going into start here obviously. The first set of tutorials were recently added and these are touch based tutorials. So for students and teachers using iOS devices, iPads, these touch tutorials are designed for you. Since we tend to use laptops for Minecraft Education Edition and also using mouses, all students will tell you to use it with a mouse, you'll be going down to the movement tutorial number one, the one that does not have the touch added to its title. So I'll click on this and we simply go into the create world option. The level is imported and we end up in our first world. So what is a world? This is a world. A world is a virtual construct and looking around, it's very block like. That is the look of Minecraft and has always been. The more you work in Minecraft, the more natural this block like world will appear to you. So what we're going to do is simply follow the hints that appear in the middle of the screen and read any of these signboards. The signboards are a large part of the education workflow of Minecraft Education Edition. You'll see these signboards everywhere and these are the student cues, the learning cues that guide how we wish students to interact with these virtual worlds. So this here is our greeting board and it simply tells us the purpose of the tutorial. Use your mouse to look at the golden block above, after that block turns to iron, another will appear. Look at all the golden blocks and open up the park gate. So let's go ahead and do that. Where we are looking is the camera control and the camera control is simply operated by the movement of the mouse. Our last one is here. And the final hint is to turn around for the block which sits behind us. And this is encouraging you to understand that Minecraft does have a great 360 degree view 
And this is the immersive element of being in a Minecraft world. So we are now being encouraged to go from using the mouse to look around to using the keyboard to move around. And we have a WASD movement keypad and this is quite common to most games. WASD and spacebar for jumping. So we'll just go ahead and walk forward. Now I've hit my first block. Obviously I can't go forward there but the tutorial is reminding me that I can move left and right. I could use my camera to look around and this will become more natural as we proceed in this first tutorial but for now I'm going to be a good tutorial student and simply use A to move left and D key to move right. Now I need to go back to my first function and that was using the W key to move forward. So now I'll be using just a combination of W, A and D to move forward and left and right and this should get us through this part of the maze. So this is W, D, W, A, W, D, W, A, W, D. And we're now coming through to the end of this small segment of the tutorial. So I'll press W and we are moving towards a fountain. Here is where we can use our mouse to turn around corners. Rather than always using W, a and D, which can be quite a slow way of walking. We can simply keep our finger pressed down on W, the forward key, and use our movement to walk naturally around corners. What I also like about this part of the tutorial is it shows some of the animation features in Minecraft, where not all of the elements that we see are static. There are some nice animations that add to the realistic feel of these virtual worlds. So I'm now going to just use the W key and I'm going to be using my mouse movement to walk naturally instead of in that staggered way I was walking before. So this is just W. You can hear the movement sounds as well. And all I'm doing is pressing W and using where I'm looking to direct my movements. This is a much more natural way of walking in the game and this is how all of your students will be doing it. Now here we've come up to a small ledge and if we press the W and space bar we're going to jump forward. So that means that we need to press the two keys at once. So I'll press W and then the space bar and we should be jumping forward. Here we go. So that was a little jump if you saw it. And we now get to do it again. W and jump and I can just keep walking through this space repeating the process jump jump again with the space bar now when it's one block high you can see how there's the ground that I'm on now and we're going up one block we can simply walk straight over that if it was a higher range, say it's two blocks from the ground, then we need to jump. But I'm now going to follow the instructions and continue forwards to exit this park and our first tutorial stage. So our lesson is complete and you'll notice that each of these lessons, these tutorials, is roughly the same duration all we're really doing is covering off one of the key elements of working in Minecraft and this one was all about movement. So I need to walk onto the pressure plate if I wanted to try the tutorial again. But I don't want to do that so I'm going to take our other tutorial option, press the escape key and then we go save and exit. From here I can go back into the library how to play, start here, and remembering not to do the touch tutorials, I've done tutorial one which was movement, I can now go ahead onto tutorial two which is the place and break tutorial. This one is all about the blocks that we see make up all of the Minecraft worlds. So I'll stop this tutorial here, I think you get the idea now. However, if you just follow the same formula of reading all of the instruction boards and 
follow the hints on screen you should enjoy the process of learning at your own pace in Minecraft Education Edition.